Okay guys, I'm scripted as always. I'm gonna do an unboxing today of the TP-Link BE9300, which is a tri-band router in the Wi-Fi 7 class. And this uh, has a full gigabyte uh, connectivity, which means it has uh, 2.5 gigabits per second ports, unlike normal routers, which normally uh, is around one gigabyte connection ports. And of course, it is a tri-band router, which means it has the 2.4, the 5, and the 6 gigahertz uh, uh, networks, which means it has three different networks available, which means that you can have the 6 gigahertz network, which you can use to like have exclusively for your quest, making it essentially a dedicated network for that unit. Now, I'm probably not going to use that it because I'm going to use this as my main router, and I'm going to try and switch over my uh, 6E router in here and use that as a bridge. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. But right now, let's open this one up. Let's unpack it. Let's test it and uh, see how it works. It's a pretty big boy. And you can see the box is pretty big as well. So we're just going to unbox it and uh, see what it looks like. This router is priced at around 240 or 250 euros or dollars. Uh, which uh, puts it at, well, it's an expensive router, of course it is, but uh, compared to other routers in this class, it's actually not that bad. Nope. Pull. I expected this to weigh like a ton. It really doesn't. It is actually quite light and uh, the footprint is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. It's still it's still a big boy compared to like the router but if you lay it down on the side like this it's pretty much well it's, it's a lot it's a lot thicker than a normal Wi-Fi but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's it's not half as bad as I thought it was. Here's my old copy of Neverwinter Nights 2. Just so that you can compare the size of it, it's uh, actually not that bad. Put it on the shelf, you know. So, we got that, we got our instruction manuals, we got something that has a bit of lightning on it, I'm guessing that's the power. And we have this thing, which has a little cogwheel on it, which I guess is the instruction manuals. And we have a very good performance, uh, RJ47, 45, what it's called, uh, whatever. So, let's take this away. You can tell I'm being careful when opening the boxes, that's because I actually want to keep my option to return this if it's not up to my standards or my needs. I actually recommend that you buy stuff that you actually have a return policy on because you never know how it's going to perform for your equipment or your setup. Uh, even if you watch a review like this and it works out fine for me, it might not work out for you because of your setup. It all depends on your area, of your disturbances or what kind of equipment you're using elsewhere. So always buy something with a return policy so you can actually test it. And if it's not up to your spec, you can always return it. Be a good customer take care of the packaging and be able to wrap it pretty much up the same way that you got it so that they can actually sell it for full price again. Oh, this is this is a pretty boy. Off. You need to be nice and shiny, don't you? This would then be the power supply which is actually quite big. This is just a 12 volt uh, power supply. I don't know why it's so beefy, but I guess it's going to pull a few amps. And this? Uh huh. This is probably stuff that I should um, not include in the video. You get like this little sticker here, which has like the default password and, uh, and Wi Fi name that you can put on your box. And uh, you will always have that available uh, on, on the router. But it's unique for each router, it looks like, because these cards are, well, they look unique and randomly generated. So that if you don't know how to set this up at all, you can just plug it in your wall and just use this, and then it would actually work. So that's very convenient if uh, you're not very tech savvy, you, this would be pretty useful for you. Of course, for my sake, that's not an issue anyway. 
Um, we have a reset pin tool, which is pretty, pretty dumb really, because you can just use like a paper clip or something like that, but sure, why not? And what else do we got? We got a public license and uh, can connect to, to Wi-Fi 7 probably wirelessly. Some older versions or drivers of software just has like this little reminder that remember to upgrade, update your devices because they might not be able to connect to Wi-Fi 7 at all if you don't update them. And then there's a general uh, public license notice here. And we got ourselves a quick installation guide. So that would be everything that you find in the box, really. So that's it, really, and this is the box. As you can see, it's it's a big boy. But um, if you put, lay it down on its side, the footprint is pretty much the same as a normal router, but it's thicker. I don't really know if you can put it on its side, if it will work that way, but the vents are on the side, so I don't really see a reason why it shouldn't. Uh, if you stand it upright, which is the way they want you to use it, it looks like inspired by a PlayStation or something like that. Um, on the back side here, you have like the four connectivity ports for the um, twisted pairs. You have uh, four LAN ports and one WAN port. And of course the USB, if you want to connect the uh, little uh, Bluetooth, if you want to connect the USB drive to this and use this as an NAS, you probably can, don't recommend it. I actually recommend that you use like something dedicated instead for that. But it's possible and uh, you have a little reset pin there that you can put in your little paper clip device there and a power button and a power off in the front here we got a quick connect button we have the wi-fi on and off and a very practical little light button there which i think you can use to actually turn on and off the lights in this thing which is practical if you want to put this into your bedroom now i'm not going to put this in my bedroom i'm going to put this in my living room because that's the center of my house and the most ideal place to place my router so it reaches the, the entire uh, space i can't really put it in here because this is in the end of the house which would limit the connectivity in the other end so uh, that's why i don't have it in here we're going to try to set this up and uh, see what kind of uh, settings we got to play with. So first of all, we need to go into the living room and plug this in. So here we are at my living room. And uh, as you can see, it is a big boy. So I might actually just place it down here on the subwoofer, where it also can stand. And this is the old router, which is mounted on my wall. Now I have unplugged that router, so we're just gonna plug these TP cables from this router over to this new router over here. And there we go, connected and running. So let's go and check out that setup. So now that that's set up, I just need to connect to the network. And the way to do that is to use the practical card which we got in the box, which has the ID of the Wi-Fi and the password uh, written on it. It also has the QR code where you can scan and get the Feather app on App Store and Play Store. So we're going to go into our third Feather app. And as you can see, it found my new device right away. Let's add this device. Yep, that is done. One is restarted. Set a device password. Set the network name. And for convenience sake, I'm going, just going to recreate and the same network as we used before. There we go. We're back and connected to our Wi-Fi. Testing our network, congratulations. You can now enjoy the internet. So there you go. Our up and down rates are okay. We got 18 clients already connected. Two gigahertz, so five gigahertz, and of course, wired connections. So we can go into the advanced settings here and we have a couple of options from IPTV via your VLAN, which you can set up for your, your uh, smart TVs. You can set up an additional VPN server or VPN client if you want to. And you can also do the device isolation, which seems pretty smart. If you have smart devices, you can put them into here so that I don't actually share information with the rest of the network so I don't, you don't, you won't unnecessarily spy on you. Uh, you have the operations mode where you can set up wireless router or access point. We can run the network diagnostics to make sure that everything is working fine. You can also set up an easy mesh 
uh, if you have other routers that are supported with mesh networks, which I do. I'm not going to do that right now. But of course, the one thing that we, I know that most of you guys want me to test is to see how this works with a Quest. Here we are inside our Quest. We're going to go into our networks here. And we have the Wi-Fi 6, which I have the auto connect uh, turned off on. And we're going to find the Wi-Fi 7. There we go. Now we're connected to our Wi-Fi 7 connection. So I actually had to do this twice because Oculus or Meta actually cuts out this window if you just start recording and you're not in here from by default, uh, which is kind of messed up really. It feels like they're trying to deny me from recording this. Uh, which they probably are because there is a lot of information here I have to blur out. So you don't want to accidentally put that out on the internet. I get that. Uh, my IPv6 address is fine because I don't use an IPv6 uh, server, so that's fine. But uh, the rest is, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's blurred out right now. But what's interesting is that, as you can see now, my transmit speed and receiving speed, as now I'm in this room and my router is behind that wall, it's at full speed and it's stable. It looks very stable. Well, look what happens when I turn around toward my computer. It automatically drops down or randomly drops down. Now it's at 17. And the last time I tested this, it was down to 14. Let's see if it does that now too. If I just stay here, try not to move too much. Now it's down to 14 and 12, as you see. And if I turn around toward my router, it pops right back up to 2,401. And that tells me that this goes to the signal strength of the receiver antenna in this headset uh, that is mostly focused forward. So the minute I turn around from the router, which is behind that wall, it won't receive full speed. But with this new router, I actually get full speed in here, which I didn't with uh, the old one. So yeah, the Wi-Fi 7 router is a lot more powerful than the Wi-Fi 6E router, of course. But this router is a lot uh, less expensive than that router. And I still think that this router is very competent. So uh, even though I recommend the Wi-Fi 7 router if you can afford it, it's very powerful, you can probably use that alone. Uh, I still recommend this as uh, for use with the Quest, as long as you have the ability to keep this in the room you're actually playing. And if you don't, you can always set this up as an access point. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. So don't throw this away. It can be quite useful, especially in here, if I want to have a full signal, even when I have my back turned towards the router. Uh, I probably don't need it because that thing is actually very powerful and I'm actually quite surprised at the, the, the level of signal it has, but I still want to show you guys how to do it. And if I figure out that I can use that TP-Link Wi-Fi 7 router uh, instead of this, I will probably sell this. But uh, before I do that, we're going to make another video for you guys. So that was the TP-Link Wi-Fi 7 router. Uh, I do recommend it so far. It looks very good. I'm gonna, of course, gonna stress test it a bit more to see if it uh, disconnects or if it doesn't really work as good as it looks like it's going to work. And also going to test it out, uh, stress test it to all my other devices, and we're gonna see how this works. And I'll give you a, 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 another feedback when I've been testing it for a few weeks, really. Uh, and until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like this video if you like, subscribe if you want to, and I'll talk to you next time.